Well, hello YouTube. This is Alan. I know it's been a little over a year since the last update, and yeah, it's been a pretty long time.、Uh, a lot of things have happened, but now I finally settled down, and I can put off some time to make these videos. And those efforts were not in vain.、Uh, take these two animals as examples.、Uh, if you have watched this channel for long enough,、uh, you probably have、uh, you probably have seen the videos that it's a little bit stupid. <laughs> oh, I'm oh my god, it's a little bit stupid. But yeah, I have made a video about.、Uh, Uh, the flake soles, the DIY flake soles, and these are the results. And I'm gonna show you two animals. They came from.、Uh, they are the genus of Odontula bees, and they are quite renowned for their、uh, the difficulties to raise this kind of. I don't know how to call them, the large teeth adult male, because they usually would hatch out. To be a medium or a short teeth、uh, form, and in that form, the teeth will not be symmetrical. It's not that popular uh, in the market. Uh, this is the result that a lot of beetle breeders are trying to get: the large teeth, the large teeth form, or say the long teeth form. I don't know. And This animal is the Odontula bees Burmester, Burmesteri. I don't know. I know the pronunciation is highly likely to be wrong. I know. I couldn't handle those Latin names. They always confuses me. So in this video, I'm just going to call it O B. All right. And the animal right here is a Odontula bees.、Uh, Alexis, I know. I'm just going going to call it O A, and I'm going to put the Latin names right here somewhere in the video. And in today's video, I'm going to walk you through why I choose to let them hatch in my DIY pupa chamber instead of letting them stay in their own、uh, pupa chamber made by themselves. All right. Let's dive into it. Well, before you choose, you would need to have a pupa, right? So in this clip, I'm showing you the process. I'm locating a pupa. And I'm just scrapping off the redundant material of that pupa chamber. I just keep it. I just keep scrapping, 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 scrapping. And for the head part of the chamber, the particles will be usually thicker. It's easier for the adult to get out of that chamber once it hatched from pupa. And I slowly open a crack. But it hasn't changed into pupa, so I quickly sealed it up and shut the camera off. For natural pupa chamber, the pros are obvious. They're easy to care. There's no need to worry about. But the con is, for genus of Odontula bees and Dynasty, the male they would usually having a hard time to form a perfect pupa in their own pupa chamber, and it affects larger size male even more. And for artificial pupa chamber, the con is obvious. 
you're having a hard time maintaining the moisture and temperature. But the pros are you get to capture the transition process and they will usually form a better shape pupa. Well, so now, after you know the two methods of doing it, what will you choose? Will you choose to let the pupa to stay in its original pupa chamber? Or you like me, you would choose to make an artificial one? Leave your comments down below, I would like to know your decision. And I will be seeing you guys in the next video. And Alex, uh, I know I don't know if you're watching this video, but if you are, I hope everything goes well on your side. Cheers, Ufidesin. <laughs>